Hi, I'm Anna Trugman. I'm an assistant professor in the UC Santa Barbara Geography Department, where I've um, been working since 2019. And I'm an expert in forest ecology and ecological dynamics, particularly after climate and fire disturbances, and also an expert in um, mathematical modeling of these forest processes. And I wanna take you inside some of these mathematical models so I can um, let you know how we can use them to help with um, wildfire mitigation and adaptation. And so this is, um, a coupled wildfire vegetation model that my group works with that represents a given forested domain. So for example, we're looking at, um, in particular, the Sierra Nevada at this point in time. Uh, and the fire characteristics are represented on a 12 kilometer grid. And um, the factors that influence those fire characteristics include things like climate, but there's also a dynamic feedback between the fuels, which is where we get into the vegetation dynamic portion of the model. And that's represented on a one kilometer grid cell. And this enables us to represent heterogeneity and forest composition. So for example, different species types that occur on the landscape that have different biomass, so live fuels as well as down fuels and different flammabilities. Um, and this is just a little more detailed uh, representation of this dynamic coupling um, at large spatial scales between um, the fire characteristics and the fuels that this model produces. Um, and so you have like fire geography, um, effects of aridity on fire, and this um, in turn impacts the different tree regenerations, growth, um, and mortality, which is um, a dynamic feedback loop between these fuels and climate that we know is so important here in California um, in determining these different wildfire regimes. And so um, we've been working across the US, um, um, honing in on this panel E on the left, you can see the different species types that are represented within the model um, with their different uh, fuel characteristics that affect wildfire spread. And zooming in on the Sierra Nevada, you can see these each of these different climate grid scales, cells at scale with these um, yellow boxes. And within each of these yellow boxes, you can see the one um, kilometer squared resolution at which we represent the different species that are affecting the um, fuel coupling in the model. And one thing we're particularly excited about right now is um, looking at uh, management inter interventions in the fuels related to treatments and how that might mitigate um, wildfire severity uh, and total fire extent, extent in um, areas that are highly vulnerable from a population perspective and also forest resilience and um, forest grassland transitions. And so we have all of these different boundary data sets that we're using in the model um, related to slope, proximity to roads and proximity to homes that we might be interested in using the model to optimize treatments to protect, as well as dynamic characteristics from the wild or from the forest model that provide us biomass or fuels, as well as connectivity, which really influences fire spread. And from that, we can get model outputs. This is just one example where we look at how um, forest extent might change um, if we ha have a um, control versus treatment intervention. And this can be done for things like looking at changes in fire severity and um, fire extent over decadal or longer time scales, something that we wouldn't really be able to do um, in the duration of an experiment outside to um, support management decisions. So with that, um, I thank you for listening and I um, hope to hear from you soon.